On the brink of a Brexit deal, the EU Commission President and Rishi Sunak to meet tomorrow. After a week of full storms, the pair are poised to sign a new agreement on trade in Northern Ireland. Also ahead, 59 migrants, including children, drown trying to reach the shores of Italy and... Jubilation for Manchester United fans as they lift the Carabao Cup. This is ITV News with Romilly Weeks. Good evening. The prospect of a new deal with the EU over trade in Northern Ireland moved a step closer tonight. Tomorrow, the Prime Minister will meet the President of the EU Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, for talks which are widely expected to signal a new agreement. Earlier, the Deputy Prime Minister, Dominic Raab, said that Britain and the EU are on the cusp of a deal. However, securing concessions from Europe is only part of the battle. The Prime Minister still has to win over Eurosceptic backbenchers and the Democratic Unionist Party, as our political correspondent Harry Horton reports. Prime Ministers have tried before. I think the country requires fresh leadership. And failed to face down their own Eurosceptic backbenchers. Of course, much remains to be done. While others promise to get Brexit done. And we will do a new deal, a better deal. But now Rishi Sunak has vowed to finish the job as he prepares to unveil his new Northern Ireland protocol. Tomorrow, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen will visit the UK hoping to sign a new agreement. But there are more hurdles to clear. Unionists in Northern Ireland say they won't return to power-sharing government until their concerns are addressed. Ministers are hopeful they can win them over. With the changes that I've alluded to, and if we can secure them, these are exactly the things that Conservatives, the ERG, myself, someone who resigned as Brexit Secretary over the Northern Ireland Protocol, and the DUP have called for. If we can secure those changes, I'm hopeful there'll be a way forward. The existing protocol means an effective trade border in the Irish Sea has slowed the flow of goods from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. A new deal is expected to include customs checks-free green lanes for goods staying in Northern Ireland, while goods destined for the Republic of Ireland, which remains in the EU, will continue to face checks in a red lane. Labour says it's willing to offer its support. It does mean that we can get closer relations with the European Union. There's a whole range of things that we've not been able to discuss. And so if Rishi Sunak is able to stand up to those in his party that would say you shouldn't strike a deal, that must be a good thing in the national interest. The Prime Minister has promised to allow Parliament to express its view. How and when isn't yet clear. But Rishi Sunak hopes he can soon put this latest Brexit battle behind him. Harry, it hasn't been the smoothest of paths to get here. Is this it? Yeah, I think so. I think we're almost certain to get a deal tomorrow. I mean, why else would Ursula von der Leyen come all the way to the UK? Uh, and we're going to get details of exactly what is in this deal for the first time tomorrow. Now, number 10 feels as though they've managed to extract some quite significant concessions from the EU. And crucially, they think it meets the threshold of what the DUP have been asking for. We've seen some grumblings from them over the weekend and from backbench MPs, but no real strong opposition to this. Everyone, I think, is waiting to see exactly what the legal text has to say here. Now, when it comes to Brexit, it's often not quite as simple as you think it's going to be. Uh, but this is a big 24 hours ahead for the Prime Minister and how the choreography of this works will uh, go some way to dictating whether he's going to be successful in getting the approval for this deal. Absolutely. Thanks, Harry. Dozens of migrants have drowned within sight of the Italian shore after their overloaded boat broke up as they attempted to land. The bodies of at least 59 people, including 12 children, have been recovered. 80 people have been rescued. Rebecca Barry has the latest. This is what the Coast Guard discovered on the shores of southern Italy in the early hours of this morning. The carcass of a boat along with the bodies of dozens of people, including a baby. 
In daylight, the wreck of the boat which carried and killed the migrants was still being pummeled by the deadly waters. It thought more than a hundred people had been on board attempting to cross the rough seas off the coast of Calabria. You can hear the strong winds in this interview with the local mayor. They're still being found, he says. A policeman just pulled the body of a two-year-old out of the water. Families who'd been so desperate to reach here. Some did make it. Around 80 people survived, having escaped horrors at home, now burdened with even more. It's thought they came from several countries, including Afghanistan, Syria and Iran. Già sono stati recuperati 40 morti, tra cui molti bambini. During his address in St. Peter's Square, Pope Francis said he was praying for the dead, the missing and those who survived. More than 200 migrants are thought to have died in these waters so far this year. Italy's right-wing government recently imposed tough new laws on charities rescuing people. Humanitarian groups say that's further endangering lives. Italy's Prime Minister has blamed inhumane people traffickers and is promising to do more to prevent the crossings. Rebecca Barry, ITV News. As the Russian invasion of Ukraine moves into its second year, there's no sign of an end to the violence. Ukraine's President Zelensky today warned the battles would continue until Ukraine had regained all its territory as the war on the Eastern Front line rages on. Our correspondent Emma Murphy sent this from Kyiv a little earlier. At the end of this week, where the focus has very much been on the war that has taken place in this country over the last year, a reminder from the Ukrainian president that actually Russia's moves towards Ukraine's territory have gone on much longer. He pointed out that nine years ago was the moment that President Putin went into Crimea and took that land. And President Zelensky was very clear that this battle would continue until every part of Ukraine was once again flying the Ukrainian flag. In terms of moves from uh, the Russian side today, where we've had a statement from President Putin telling the Russian people very clearly that he sees the West as a direct threat to the very future of the nation itself. That's something that Western allies have always denied, but is clearly a message that President Putin wants to stress to the Russian people. There's no sign on either side of any attempt to try and take the tension out of this situation to try and reduce any of the threat and violence. And on the ground, over on that eastern front near Bakhmut, the tussle for territory has gone on throughout the course of the day. There has been no great move on either side, but there has been great loss of life, a loss of life that is expected to continue well into the coming days as the fight for that small town continues. Three weeks ago tonight, an earthquake rocked Turkey and Syria with devastating consequences. More than 50,000 people have been killed. The World Health Organization estimates more than 26 million have been effective. UNICEF say more than 7 million of those are children. Neil Connery has the stories of three children whose lives have been torn apart. Bewildered and bereaved, Mahmoud was orphaned by the earthquake. This is what's left of what he used to call home. Neighbours say his father threw him from a window seconds before the building collapsed. His grandfather is now caring for him. The boy speaks sometimes, other times he doesn't because he's traumatised. We found his parents in the house. We retrieved their bodies after four days. He is their only child. Maybe his dad threw him from the window, or maybe it's an act of God. I don't know. Rania lost her father and two of her sisters in a village near Idlib. The family now live in a tent. Her mother is injured, leaving the teenager, the eldest of nine siblings, to care for them. My uncle said the earthquake is over, but we don't want to go and live in houses now. This is our fate. We are now only six girls, three boys and an injured mum who cannot move herself. If my sisters need anything, mum cannot help them. In Atarib near Aleppo, Mohammed holds vigil over his family's fresh graves. I could hear my family as we were all asleep in the same room, he says. 
I was the first to be recovered after being under the rubble for five hours. There's no one left now. My mum, dad, brothers and sisters all died. Mahmoud, Rania and Mohammed, three young lives traumatised and changed forever by the earthquake. Neil Connery, ITV News. Sport now, and France have beaten Scotland in a tense Six Nations tie. Two players were sent off in the first 20 minutes, with Scotland 19-0 down in the first half. They fought back, but in the end, it wasn't enough to beat the home side. And Celtic have retained the Viaplay Cup after getting the better of old rivals Rangers. Two goals from Japanese winger Kyogo Furuhashi secured them the win. Finally, Manchester United have won the first trophy of the season. They lifted the Carabao Cup after putting two goals past Newcastle United. From Wembley, Chris Scudder reports. Just like the old glory days for Manchester United, this was their first trophy for six years. In contrast, Newcastle, for all their new wealth under Saudi Arabian ownership, had not won any major domestic trophy for 68 years. They started with promise, but once David De Gea had kept out their best early effort, it became another tale of what might have been. Shaw sweeps in the kick, it's there! Casemiro heading United into the lead. Just United who draw first blood! Before they'd had time to steady the ship, it was 2-0, and almost inevitably, Marcus Rashford was the man who did the damage. In, and Manchester United really have got a grip of it now! Right now, he just can't stop scoring. And that was enough for victory. Another special day, arguably the world's biggest club, overcoming the world's richest, whose wait for glory goes on. Yeah, they've done us, they've done us proud getting this far, so... Have to take it from there, what would you A day to remember, right? Oh, absolutely. Through the bad times. bad times as well. We were there in the second division. Yeah. And hopefully now we're on the on, on the, on the march to the good times. Coming back from not playing well to actually winning things. So yeah, it's what good. What are you going to say when you go to school tomorrow? <laughs> Come on, Reds. <laughs> So in the end, the old hands beat the new money. Newcastle's time will probably come, but right now the other United from Manchester are well and truly back. Chris Scudder, ITV News, Wembley. And that's all for tonight. Have a very good evening. Good night.